Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at a new acquisition of mine and that is the Commodore CPM cartridge from 1983. What does this do you may ask? Well, in 1982 or late 1982 when the Commodore 64 finally arrived there wasn't a huge amount of software and there certainly wasn't a huge amount of business software for the Commodore 64. While this would change as the years went by, in 1982, 1983, business software was uh, few and far between on the humble 64. And Commodore made the mistake of not only advertising this cartridge for sale, by saying the Commodore 64 would be CPM compatible. Of course, it isn't CPM compatible, as the Commodore 64 doesn't contain a Z80 CPU. But finally, Commodore did release the CPM cartridge, and this is what we see here. This is, it says, Commodore 64 CPM cartridge. CPM is a trademark of digital research. Now, you can have a long conversation about CPM, the origins of Microsoft DOS and all the rest of it, but we won't. We'll just concentrate on the humble CPM cartridge connected to the rather delightfully brown Commodore 64. So what is it? Well, this cartridge makes the Commodore 64 essentially a dual processor computer, although uh, with the cartridge connected, it's purely a Z80 machine. It contains a Z80 CPU, which is itself a copy of the, or a clone of the Intel CPU. Uh, and this cartridge will allow you to run version 2.2 of digital researchers CPM. Why version 2.2? Well, it's less resource heavy than version 3. Version 3 was included on the Commodore 128 and is a much more usable system than 2.2, which is on this cartridge. The CPM operating system in the 70s was the most popular, most widely used operating system in the world. Every computer of worth its salt used CPM and anyone who has ever used CPM will tell you how good it was at that time. One thing it didn't have until later was graphics. This is text only, very much like Microsoft DOS, and there is a reason for that. But anyway, like I said, the CPM operating system required an Intel 8080 CPU, which is what this has in it, or in truth, it has a Zilog Z80 CPU. The operating system CPM requires a Z80 and will not work on the Commodore 6502. But the 6502 is used for display on the screen, keyboard I.O. and disk access. Unfortunately, the CPM cartridge from Commodore was a disaster on the marketplace. It didn't sell well at all and there are quite a few reasons for that. One of the reasons was that the Commodore 1541 disk drive that was sold with the Commodore 64 couldn't read CPM disks. So if you used an Osborne, perhaps at work or some other machine, uh, took the disk home and put it in your 1541, the Commodore 64 couldn't read the disk. What you had to do was have a 1541 formatted disk from MFM to Commodore's GCR file format to read the disk. This of course meant that the 1541 couldn't read any CPM disks. How can you swap software if the Commodore disk drive won't read disks? There was also another problem. The CPM disk or CPM cartridge relied heavily on the Revision 1 Commodore 64. The Revision 1 Commodore 64 had a few issues and Commodore were forever tinkering with the Commodore 64. And one of the first revisions that the Commodore 64 had was a bug in the VIC chip. Unfortunately, when they revised the VIC chip, the graphics chip in the 64, it stopped the CPM cartridge working. So that means that any computer made in 1982 and early 1983 should, in theory, be able to run the CPM cartridge. Whereas machines after that date either won't work at all or work very intermittently. Commodore then cancelled the CPM cartridge. Um, they'd fulfilled their requirement to supply the CPM cartridge under the fact that they, 
they'd advertised this thing. Commodore learnt from their mistakes when they released the 128 in 1985 and that came with a built-in onboard Z80 CPU and a disk drive that could read CPM disks. You could connect a 1571 into the Commodore 64 and I would imagine that would allow you to run native CPM disks. I haven't tried this but I'm going to give it a go. So reading from the back of the manual that Commodore supplied, it says the Commodore CPM 2.2 operating system. Now you can turn your Commodore 64 into a dual processor home computer. The Commodore 64 CPM version 2.2 lets you expand your software applications you use on your Commodore 64. When you add this easy to install system, you can begin using some of the many available CPM programs. These include widely used business applications, word processing, high level computer languages, COPOL and Fortran, and many other specialized software programs. So Commodore themselves specify that you require 1541, and of course you do, because that's the only disk drive that Commodore had at that time available for the Commodore 64. Uh, apart from the short-lived 1540. But it's not compatible with CPM disks, which are written on other computers. So if you use CPM on an IBM, an Osborne, or anything else, you couldn't read the disks. So that's why this thing failed in the marketplace. It could have been a major success for Commodore if they'd done it properly. If you look at the Z80 CPU card for the Apple II, it was probably the biggest selling add-on for the Apple II, and the Apple II sold quite a few millions of units, not as many as the 64. You imagine if this thing had worked in 1982-83, and the amount of machines that Commodore sold, estimates are anything from 30 plus million of these things, if the business community had got hold of this and this, it could have been a roaring success for Commodore and it is one of many, many mistakes that Commodore made. Anyway, enough talking by me. The next step is we'll plug this in, we'll connect it all up and we'll run some CPM programs and we'll see if a 1571 connected into the 64 will allow you to use native disks. I do have some native CPM disk, disks, um, so we'll give that a go. And uh, I'll see you in the next video when I've got all this set up and working and tried a few things, make sure it works. And we'll probably do a stream, but that might be, uh, that might be in a few days or a week's time. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.